Welcome back. In the second of three videos looking at games as an industry, we're going to take a more in-depth look at the economic state of the current game industry. We briefly looked at the rise of commercial gaming from the early arcades of the 1970s up to approximately 2010, roughly 40 years. That is how long it took for the computer game industry to to grow to be a global market worth 35 billion US dollars in 2007. In 2018, that same market is expected to generate 137.9 billion dollars in revenue. In a decade, an astonishing 100 billion dollars of additional value was created. The game industry has become one of the fastest growing sectors of the economy, and in the last decade, games have truly come of age evolving from a niche subculture into the cultural mainstream, along the way becoming one of the dominant media and cultural activities that we spend our time and money on. How has the game industry grown their customer base so quickly? What were the key changes that sparked this accelerated growth? And what lessons can be learned from one of the fastest growing sections of the cultural and creative economy? From the mid-1980s to the mid-2000s, the video game market was really dominated by a few large companies based in the US and Japan. Games and games creation were very closely aligned to these specific platforms. But if our brief history of, ga of the games industry has taught us anything, it is that technological disruption is never very far away. Around 2007, consumer behaviour and expectation changed quite rapidly. This was once again driven by technological change, in this case the availability of higher speed internet and the arrival in 2007 of the iPhone and other Android based smartphones. With the surge in smartphone and tablet ownership, games companies had new ways to engage with their customers. Consumers demanded a new form of mobile gaming, one that married their now high gaming expectations with an always online, always able to play mentality. Games companies were once again forced to innovate to meet the changing needs of their customers. The games industry achieved this by meeting the new technical demands of working on mobile while realigning their artistic ambitions. To allow this new generation of mobile end users engage with meaningful content in this new online mobile age. The reward for redesigning their products around new end user expectations? a 400% increase in the market cap for the gaming sector from $35 billion in 2007 to $137 billion in 2018. Let's take a more in-depth look at how that $137 billion breaks down. This will help us get a better idea of how the game market is actually structured. We can see that the largest part of the market is in Asia accounting for approximately $71 billion, or 52% of the global games market. This is followed by North America, at 23%. On this project, we are most interested in Europe. Here we see that Europe, the Middle East and Africa account for 21% of the market, or $28.7 billion. If we look at Western Europe in more detail, we can see that of the 28 billion for Europe, the Middle East and Africa, that Western Europe makes up 20 billion of this, or roughly 14.5% of the global market. This might lead you to believe that Europe was not that much into gaming, which would be wrong. And we can see this if we break down the numbers by country. When we break the numbers down by country, we again see that Asia and the United States dominate the top part of the market, with China alone accounting for $37 billion, followed by the United States, Japan and South Korea. Germany is the only European country in the top five. However, if we look at the top 10 countries, we can see that European countries make up the majority of places from five to 10. With Germany, the UK, France, Spain and Italy all being major gaming markets. If we break the numbers down by category of gaming type, we can see an interesting trend. Mobile gaming is the largest segment in 2018, claiming more than half of all global game revenues for the first time. 
combined, smartphone and tablet gaming will generate $70.3 billion, accounting for 51% of the total global market. The segment also has the most players, with 2.2 billion, the majority of whom are gaming on smartphones. With the rise in mobile games, we can see the latest example of the games industry realigning its creative products to enhance user engagement and to meet consumer needs. This has been a key contributor to the accelerated growth of the games market, in terms of both player numbers and revenue. As consumers have begun spending more and more time online, there has been a general shift away from selling expensive games at point of purchase, in a shop or even online. This is often referred to as the bricks and mortar method of selling a game. This creates a barrier of entry for potential new customers. The shift towards mobile and changing user expectations has forced game developers to create innovative new business models. Revenues are often now generated through subscription or online advertising, with many companies moving towards what is known as the free to play or freemium model. In this business model, the game is given to the end user for free, but money is charged for additional services, such as the sale of virtual goods and premium content. These are referred to as microtransactions. Companies employ sophisticated real-time in-game analytics to track player behavior, so that they can offer their end users options to enhance their experience of the game. When you create the right level of in-game engagement, players are happy to pay these microtransactions. And when you have a large community of players, companies can accumulate large amounts of money every day. These new business models form part of a broader shift across the industry towards games as more of a service than as a product. Rovio are a Finnish company who gained international success with the Angry Birds franchise. When it was listed as a publicly traded company on the Nasdaq in October of 2017, they were valued at $1 billion. Swedish company King are best known for Candy Crush. They are considered one of the most financially successful games companies utilising the freemium model. In February 2016, Activision, who you may recall from our brief history of the gaming industry, back in 1979 they were the first third party developer, closed its acquisition of King for a deal of $5.9 billion. As a result, they now operate the world's largest games network, reaching around 500 million users. In June of 2016, Supercell, another Finnish company known for the wildly successful Clash of Clans, was acquired by Tencent for $8.6 billion. From these figures, we can see that European companies have been very successful at adapting to the shift towards casual, mobile and online gaming. They have been particularly successful at creating creative products that engage end users where and when they want to play games. Because of this, they have seen very rapid growth, often within a very short period of time. The future looks bright for the games industry across the near future. The current projected compound annual growth rate for the global games industry is a very healthy 8.2%. There will be an increasing market share in the mobile game sector of the market across the next few years. Mobile skeptics have been proved wrong as developers have managed to create games for mobile in genres considered too complex for mobile screens and controls. Several games were launched to success that could match the immersive experience of consoles or PCs, for example. Fortnite for iOS and Player Unknown Battlegrounds Mobile show that markets are ready for core gaming experiences on mobile. Gaming is an example of a creative and cultural industry that has been very successful at adapting to the ever increasing use of technology in our everyday lives. From new innovative business models such as free to play to real time in game analytics that monitor end user engagement. The games industry has been at the forefront of developing creative and meaningful experiences for end users. In the future, it is likely that many of these innovative new methods of attracting and retaining consumers will be adopted by other sectors of the economy. Some signs that this is already happening can be seen by the influx of new players into the gaming market, which include some of the largest companies in the world. 
If you recall from the History of Gaming video, Microsoft are an older player in this very young market, entering gaming in 2001 with the Xbox. In March of 2014, Facebook acquired virtual reality company Oculus for $2.3 billion. Tencent, the Chinese equivalent of Facebook, have bought a 40% share of Unreal Engine, one of the most popular game development tools, and have heavily invested in many games companies. Amazon bought Twitch, a live game streaming service in August of 2014, for $970 million. It has also launched its own game development tool, called Lumberyard. And of course, Google and Apple are big players in the mobile space, where most mobile games are sold through their respective app stores. As we have seen, the games industry has grown at a phenomenal rate, and in the last 10 years in particular, it has become a truly global cultural phenomenon. The last decade has seen huge growth, with the market cap rising by $100 billion. This has been facilitated by the rise in smartphones and always online access. Europe is well placed to capitalise on the glowing mobile market. As we have seen in our brief history of gaming, the market and economics have changed from slot machines, to buying games on specific platforms, playing online and gaming on mobile. With each shift in technology, once dominant companies are replaced by companies that are willing to innovate to meet their end user needs. If there is one constant in the games industry, it is change. The technology is constantly changing, end users' artistic expectations get higher and higher. Mobile and online access has changed the core economics of the game industry, like many other sectors of the European economy, such as the effects of online shopping on the high streets of so many towns and cities across Europe. But how have games companies so successfully navigated all this change? I think that the real answer here is that successful games companies highly value player engagement. And their products are designed around their player expectations. The game industry has a true customer obsession. They are customer centric, not product centric, and will redesign their artistic and technical goals based on extensive customer feedback engagement with their communities, and through the use of detailed in-game analytics. If we could sum up the lessons learned from the game industry's phenomenal growth over the last 10 years, it would be, don't define your business by the products that you sell, or by the way that you sell it. Instead, define your business by the customers you serve, your end users.